Howdy, I'm Sadie Mae with the Awesome Orange, and this week I'm back with another awesome build. This time we're gonna cover up this ugly pool equipment with an awesome DIY modern privacy fence. A big thank you to Simpson Strong Tie for sponsoring this video. At the beginning of this year, Simpson sent me out a sample of their new black powder coated ridge tie connectors and I just knew these would be great for building me a fence to hide my pool equipment. So I did a rough design and sketch up and then got to clearing the area. And then before digging, I called 411 to have my local utility company come out and mark my lines to ensure I didn't accidentally hit them while digging. And then I started to stake out where the fence was going to go. Luckily, I had my husband to help me with the digging. We live near the river, so our ground is really rocky. So we used a breaker bar to loosen up the dirt and then a post hole digger shovel to remove the dirt. I'll be using four by four posts, so you want the hole to be about three times that or about 12 inches wide. And with the holes dug, it was time to install the post. There's lots of different ways to build, um, but we decided to cut the posts to length before installing them. Uh, I might do this differently next time, but this definitely did work for us. So I just marking the posts all three sides and then cutting them to length with the circular saw. And since we did cut those, we were trying to figure out how to secure them or make them all level. So we were thinking about using the brackets and putting the cross supports on ahead of time and then putting them in the ground. We ended up scratching this, but this section I left in here because it does show the little templates I use or jigs to get my spacing just right. Then we ended up having to measure from the hole to a string line that we set up and then putting some rock in the bottom to level each of the holes so that the poles or posts would be the same height when they were installed. You'll also notice that we put a two x four hooked to the top of all three of the posts and used a level that way as well to ensure everything was level. Then we're using some quick setting concrete. We're dumping those into the holes. We've got the posts staked. We're making sure everything is a plumb and then we're gonna go ahead and dump some water in. This is our first time using this concrete and it was a super easy way to concrete posts into the ground. You just put the concrete in then you add the water. It's basically like a gallon per bag of concrete. We did use a piece of rebar to poke it in there to make sure that the water got all the way down into the hole. And you do wanna make sure you work quick because this stuff does set up very quickly like its name. Two posts down and I went over to Awesome Oscar for a little moral support, a nice high five, and we continued on to setting post number three. This concrete is super easy to use and it doesn't require as much heavy lifting and mixing in a wheelbarrow and then dumping it in. Um, so I really appreciate that. It made these posts go in so much easier. If you do put a little bit too much water in, uh, you can always put some concrete on the top to help absorb that. So that was day one. Day two, I went back and ended up setting the next two posts by myself. But once I had the practice the previous day, it wasn't that bad. And again, use that cross two by four to make sure these posts were level. There we go, we've got one, two, three, four, five posts in. Ooh. The next day it was time to figure out that angled section of the fence. I went to Home Depot and I found these Simpson Strong Type brackets. They're LS30s and they're skewable, meaning you can bend them from zero to 135 degrees. So I attached them to a two by four using those same screw connector screws as my brackets. And then I clamped it to my four by four post and screwed it into the post using two and a half inch screws. And at this point, I had no idea if this was going to work and I didn't know how people normally install fences with an angle, but this is the best thing that I could find online. So let's see if I can bend it. And with that two by four on there, a little bit of leverage, I was able to get it bent. I tried a string line, but the two by four across the top helped me find the right angle 
that I wanted to bend it or how to bend it, how far to bend it. Then to get that last little bit, use those clamps again to help squish it together. And here I'm just loosening one of the screws on this bracket so I can pivot that top two by four just to make sure I have the right angle um, on how I bent it. So again, just double checking everything. And then once I got it to where I thought it was gonna work good, I went ahead and painted all the posts black using a color called Tricorn Black from Sherwin-Williams. I also painted the two by fours that I'm gonna be using as a cross slats before installation. Then I got out all my connectors and my screws and we get to get started making this fence awesome. Measure, mark, and then cut. There's gonna be a lot of that going on with this fence. But using my wheelbarrow as a workstation worked out awesomely for this project. I would cut a few slats and then I'd install a few slats. Then I'd paint a few slats, cut a few slats, install a few slats. But I can already tell I'm gonna love how this fence is turning out. Again, next section, just measuring it, making sure everything is level, and then installing using the brackets. And here's a close up of those jigs I used earlier. I have a three quarter inch spacer. I put in the Simpson Strong Tie connector, and then I have a jig that does a quarter inch offset from the edge of the board. Once I hold that in place, I go ahead and screw the connector there and then install the next piece of wood. And then repeat the process. And you'll notice I started using a tool belt. I've never used one before, but for this particular project with all the things that I had to carry with me, it worked out so much easier. All right, three sections down and one to go to hide this ugly pool equipment. using spacer blocks in between the slats to make sure that I hit them up just to the right spot and that gave me about a half inch reveal or peek through between each slat or board. <music> Lastly, it was time for a top cap. I mitered the corner here and then installed that using some screws right down into the top boards. With the last board installed, my fence was finished. This is the before and after. I absolutely love how my fence turned out. This side of the backyard is really starting to shape up. If you want more details on the products I used, I have them in the links in the description box below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Maybe next time we'll fix up this fire pit, but until then, remember to build loud, build wild, and have an awesome day.